For most movies, villains are usually the highlight of the film if they are done right, where they can become popular icons if that success is present soon after. But for others, if done wrong, they can actually wither into nothing where not many people would actually look back upon them fondly as an element of said movie. And this is the case for several different Disney movies where most actually don't remember certain characters from the film because they didn't have enough that was there to justify themselves ending up in the land of the forgotten. Which is something kind of true for what I wanted to focus on today in terms of how villains play out with the notable Duke of Wesselton. Now he isn't a forgotten character because Frozen is a pretty memorable film from beginning to end and Zootopia sort of references his character with Duke Weaselton, played by Alan Tudyk again, but how I just wanted to talk about him in terms of a forgotten got an antagonist in favor for something worse like Hans in the twist era of Disney and like I said in the title, being a wasted villain. Just one major character that was supposedly written with villainous intent after Elsa's focus as such but ended up into nothing being thrown away at the very last second. And I know I've been focusing on too much Frozen stuff nowadays because Disney seems more hellbent on milking this franchise to the extreme, but it's just interesting to see how many ideas there were in this singular film that could have worked in a different way with this unholy trinity of villains. Because again, it's not the fact that he isn't the villain of the film where it's very clear to us how he comes into play and then when he gets set back as the secondary antagonist of the overall structure, but just wasted for another element of the film that was breaking the mode of the expected story that comes with the typical musical formula. I mean, I mean, on the surface, it makes sense why they wanted to do that as to not to create this expectation for some that Alan Tudyk was going to be the main Disney villain of every single film of this era, but just felt like wasted potential for where they ended up because of the fact of how they used him previously as King Candy, where it felt like a new fresh opportunity for modern Disney storytelling with their villains with its own unique way that fit the story perfectly, especially the character of Ralph and that very parallel, where most good villains do serve as a parallel to the main character, where Elsa, Hans, and Duke kind of actually carried their own unique unique way towards Anna, but how they use that in such a kind of pathetic way in my opinion with what they carry in terms of their nature. Because in the beginning, we are introduced to the Duke in the present day where the story takes place before looking back on where Elsa and Anna are right now. From that point, we establish the dubious nature of the Duke with how Arendelle is back open again for business seeking to see what riches it has in store for trade between the two nations. Which of course is actually a major theme of the movie in terms of what we hear with open doors and open up the inside of our hearts to each other, represented in the way people use it for seemingly nefarious purposes as well. However, in this case, it would only be used as a red herring, meaning it's meant to misguide the audience to the true factors of the movie in terms of villainy and what the plot really wants to focus on. He is meant to be an obvious choice in terms of picking out the bad guy as to represent that attitude going out there making contact with the queen and being a sort of comic relief to his dance moves. A kooky character who's vastly interested in Arendelle for some reason, asking Anna why the gates were closed for so long. Things that can only point to a perceived threat with the lower tones expressed in his voice alongside his peppy attitude to disguise himself alongside the rest of the dignitaries. Why did they shut them in the first place? Do you know the reason? At this point compared to Hans, we are constantly keeping our eye on him and what he might do that can affect his sisters in a negative way compared to our lovely prince over here gleefully making a respectable connection to Anna as a way to subvert it much later to what he actually wants. Some might like that aspect where you have such indications going in the opposite direction for the story that can surprise you, but then again, such indication is still important to the elements of the story that sadly mutes the overall meaning it's trying to go for. Because after we go after Elsa and Anna into an argument because of Hans and her marrying someone you just met, comes the reveal of her powers where Duke expresses fear and disgust of such things. Sorcery. Knew there was something dubious going on here. And such a reaction can be described as villainous as we have learned to sympathize with Elsa's character and her trauma throughout the very beginning of the film, living in fear being ostracized just like what is happening at this very moment. Similar to what happened in The Hunchback when Esmeralda disappears from the guards causing Frollo to say witchcraft with that same disgust and fear as much as Duke, you know, coming from Disney's best and darkest villain to date. Or you can apply that nature to how much of a threat Duke is to Elsa in this situation, knowing he was out for riches of Arendelle and is disgusted by the idea of sorcery like an abomination that needs to be put out, just like how Frollo thinks certain people are evil. I mean, it's not similar in that case on that level because that's a whole nother level of evil thinking, but mainly in terms of just these moments going back to the expectation that we are all led to that makes perfect sense. To believe that he is the main antagonist representing society going against Elsa that Anna now has to stop. I mean, I actually certainly believe that at age 12 thinking he was the main threat and certainly 
apparently did everyone else as well at the time. Just signs that point to the negative aspects coming to fruition that her parents were trying to stop from the beginning, up to the point where he believes Elsa is a threat and a curse that must be stopped at all costs, and worried the same that Anna might also have powers too and might be a witch. More and more clues that he is a large looming threat over the plot in some way, a coward who hides behind his bodyguards to just further his own goals, his own personal gain. Something that is alright for a villain in my opinion, and what the story tries to really focus on. Where it doesn't really have to be great like the past with the types we already had, but with the story we have right here, it's just a representation of the reaction to such magic that someone can hold. It makes sense for where it's actually headed and what they wanted to teach us. Where again, Hans and Duke are arguing opposite sides as that juxtaposition to subvert that expectation, pointing out things that were caused out of accidents rather than on purpose. Hans caring for the well-being of Anna, chasing after Elsa, and Duke wanting her to just go out and stop her. Anyone willing to stand against the threat to what is happening. She nearly killed me! You slipped on ice. Her ice! Was Where of course, after this moment, both villains are not seen again until 20 minutes after we have Anna team up with Kristoff and Olaf to find Elsa, the point where things start to get a little desperate for the entire people of Arendelle. This scene continues Duke's callous nature, calling out Hans for handling out all the goods to the people instead of a trade partner like himself, still curious that Anna might be double-crossing them as to help Elsa because of the fact that they are sisters, and then again wondering why the gates were closed for so long earlier in the film. Has it dawned on you that your princess may be conspiring with a wicked sorceress to destroy us all? No. And of course, at the same time, it still has Hans act more caring to the people, which the movie wants you to believe is done for the twist of his own dubious personal gain of a new kingdom, rather than the person who believes in doing the right thing to help, calling out the Duke's behavior as treasonous, which makes sense because he's trying to help himself and his own people out, backstabbing the people of Arendelle in the process by wanting their queen to be removed and the prince's sister, a trade partner of another kingdom who's willing to actually subvert another kingdom's royal by actually killing them in this instance. All events that lead up to this certain moment when he's alone in conversation with his guards who are going to volunteer with Prince Hans to find Anna, where he wants them to put an end to this winter if they're going to see the queen. Which of course simply translates to kill Elsa if they see her on sight, which we see them later attempt to do. You are to put an end to this winter, do you understand? Again, this feels more like the typical standard villain the movie would usually present because of how hard their feelings are against the hero, continuing that he's that kind of character rather than a worried side character or secondary antagonist in Frozen's own definition. It just makes sense because his attitude and what is shown visually points to that certain side that he is the main conflict or threat to the plot, but what we see after is something else. Where now you are just wondering, for those who rewatch films like Frozen, is why shouldn't we follow through with such a character and instead just go with Hans, as these three are serving as the main threat to our main characters, where he clearly doesn't like Elsa and really distrusts Anna, wanting them both dead as the guards secretly hint behind Hans who wants the rest of the guards to actually keep her alive, trying to do so even if Elsa pleads not to, forcing her to act out of self-defense before Hans stop her from going too far from being the monster that everyone actually pictures her, trying to actually bring her back to reality as he does understand a little bit of what's going on. You know, the guy whose plan is to kill her later after he leaves Anna just to die just to become the new king who seemingly saved Arendelle after his brilliant plan to kill Elsa just somehow manages to stop the eternal winter. Something that just really makes total sense where the Duke's role in this part is less impactful reduced to the other dignitaries counting on Hans if things go south. Like now, this is where the twist actually starts to happen where in this instance he's a bit more caring and worried about Arendelle especially Anna, where he's now expressing sympathy towards her supposed death by Elsa. Because, you know, dumbass over here thinks he's got a foolproof plan that he already got away with. She was killed by Queen Elsa. Her own sister. Like, this is the part where you have to see how wasted he gets as a character because of how this idiotic twist got us to right here to see who the main villain really is in the last act of the film. Because like I said much earlier, they designed him to be a red herring to the plot to justify this villain instead of this in order to shock you, where his character is reduced to a regular person who is just a cowardly paranoid dude that I guess is just there because people with powers are generally scary and a threat to anyone's well-being. Just a random dude who's not really a main source of conflict or villainy. since people 
people are always afraid of what they don't understand or have. But then again, from the standard point of view of a story, that is a complete waste of everything you just shown. Those events he caused to harm Elsa in one way or point out the fact that she is a monster just meant absolutely nothing at this point in time. Nothing because he wasn't that very villainous character from the start. Sure, he believes in it at this point, but it's now toned down to becoming a relatively tame in its output. He is reduced to this side character with the dignitaries who thinks Elsa is a monster because she killed her own sister, because of the lies that are done by Hans instead of the guy in the earlier half of the film that was more dubious nature, wanting to exploit Arendelle's riches and of course wanting to kill the queen. Where at this stage, as Hans takes the role, he's reduced even further alongside all the other dignitaries outside to just simply stop and stare at the events that are happening outside in the climax of the film. One that is also filled with the problem of removing him from the scene in the emotional moments between Elsa and Anna after she stops Hans and then putting him back soon after. This is something I mentioned in my first Frozen video where he's there but then he's not, and then he's there, oh wait he's not. Another point of just wasting him because it doesn't want the villainous type of character to be featured in an emotional moment that really pays for the sins to prove that he was wrong. That every accusation he made was ignorant and invalid to what was actually true. Where it just virtually doesn't make sense to remove him if he was just physically present throughout where it only serves to elevate Hans as a true position eliminating his effect as a character at all other than that mentioned red herring at the beginning. Like why do you do that when we know he's there? We see him right there on the balcony in this scene and that scene and we know he's still there when the other dignitaries laugh at the fact that Hans was defeated because they saw him as the dumb coward that he truly was. That doesn't make sense. Why can't you show him cowering or fear or just making apologies or being sad with himself or some sort of action that actually makes sense? Or finally, after that, Duke is finally defeated and deported back home from any business with Arendelle despite his pleas, trying to make up for it saying he was a victim of fear and traumatized up to the point where he somehow had to assassinate the queen if that made any sense. I am a victim of Fear. I've been traumatized. Ah. Which is a fine defeat for the film in its own right and the focus again between the two sisters, but not enough to actually save how pathetic it was for him to go out in the last act of the film. Like, thinking about it at this stage, it just literally was so easy to have him be the villain from beginning to end, still fulfilling his role and the impact that the film has by having him step up on the part of Hans to rush over and try to kill Elsa as that is what he wants. It makes sense for him to do so and still justifies this end to what it was as he got sent back home. We could have had built off of this part because he does represent another half of Frozen's overarching theme being love versus fear and how love always conquers fear in any relationship, with the Duke generally representing fear for what villains usually impose upon their impact. They are the embodiment of such emotion, where you even still know after this very point in time, Disney still recognizes the Duke to some degree when I mentioned again earlier with Weaselton in Zootopia being a con artist of sorts and then having that reference in Frozen 2 with the ice sculptures of his funny moment at Elsa laughs at, because of the fact you just needed to be reminded that this is Frozen and Frozen is popular. Like, you remember that moment, right guys? But it's just so demeaning because you had something that at least made more sense than the other guy who could have just not be the one whose love saved the day at all and more for Elsa and Anna rather than two guys that she generally likes. In this way, I think Frozen could have ended up being stronger than it already was in the position that is to be enjoyed instead of what was thought out as an overrated mess that many people think it is. Because it is an enjoyable film, but you just had this itch to make it something more extra than it needed to be. Make it stand out on its own to be fresh in its uniqueness if you get what I mean. Which is fine and the story is well remembered for being like that, but it could have served something better with the Duke as that main place as a conflict of villain. Not like a big threat considering what we see in other films like Moana, with Tamatoa actually serving as the main villain obstacle in that way, not needing to actually do any twists or whatnot, but just something that is there for the factors of the main movie. The relationship between Elsa and Anna that are the main conflict going forward in the entire film. Where now, in this part of the video, is where we have to talk about Alan Tudyk being Disney's lucky charm and how they've used him as characters in the animated movies. Where recently, as most of us know, he served as a sadly annoying character, the goat Valentino, in which that had to be done to reference older Disney animals and because of the comic relief aspect that celebrates their history, and generally serving since Zootopia as the main animal ambassador of each film. Like, hey,
Heihei and that older dude from Moana, Pico from Encanto, Tuk Tuk and Raya, and humans like the Nothodra leader in Frozen 2, the narrator and Duffel in Strange World, the Mad Hatter in Once Upon a Studio, and more importantly for this specific video, Turbo and Wreck-It Ralph and Alistar Cray in Big Hero 6. Now the reason I highlight these two characters is because of the fact I've mentioned them before in other videos and how they're which between Frozen with Ralph, Frozen, and Big Hero 6 in play, and how most of them, in some sort of way, were fashioned as villains. The first being obvious as a villain, the second, of course, being another villain, and the third being the perceived initial villain. All in the initial period of the negative twist era of Disney, where in the case of Turbo again, he's that twist villain who was actually developed and hinted to contrast Ralph, representing the other half of the film wants to do for the main character and how they want something more out of their life. Like how I mentioned earlier in the story of Love and Fear that Frozen is supposed to be about and opening that door to such love. But then again, using the new formula that people loved about Turbo and the twist, they wanted to apply that to the hidden Hans while using the Duke as another character to be more than what he seems, as a framing device to confuse you and do something more different. Or when you think about it, Turbo is the father figure of Alan Tudyk's subsequent Disney characters that actually gave the way to Alistar Cray being in play, and how he is also a red herring for the supposed main villain again that is similar to the Duke that Alan of course played so that they can have Callahan be that twist feature for some reason. And the only reason that happened is because Frozen was just so successful that they had to try it again in some way to adapt the superhero story created by Marvel or just wanting to create a parallel to the darker side of our main character, Hero, and what happens when you lose someone going down a path of destruction, but severed because of his carelessness to his own favorite student who tried to save him when he started to fire just to use the microboss for his own gain, despite everything he praised to help Hero against Alistar which is also very painful because it would have actually made much more sense for this guy to be the villain because it felt like it from the start by how he wanted to give Hero the opportunity to have Kratek develop the microbots and give him money for it like he would always done at the beginning by how he used it for robot fights. So just like the Duke, he already had so much built up to justify this part especially in the superhero story that would have actually fit the mode of the movie much better the more you think about it, where you see how most of the characters around him just really distrust him already and would give more meaning to it other than a poorly written twist because of the fact that they just didn't want to go for the typical thing, living all their lives waiting on the wings, where it sadly just doesn't work. And why can't we have him try to fix that mistake that costed Abigail's life apparently in the beginning by using the microbots to fix that mistake to get a certain military contract and save the face of his very company instead of, you know, another coward who fears his own life? Like, why do you have to do that than the obvious choice that makes much more sense for the character in the story? Like, what kind of sick joke was Disney trying to pull here at this time by having Ellen Tudyk play all these red herring characters? Because I really just don't understand it since it ruins something that could have been decent in films that could have been great instead of just good in my opinion. And looking back at the recordings he did for Frozen, especially with the Duke, what they used in that footage seems more sinister for the lines he was trying to deliver, making it more sense to why Duke of Weaseltown was a villain instead of what we got, and why the attitude was shaped something different for Alistar Cray in that regard. Where all of this just began because they couldn't work out the original version of the Duke of Weaseltown very well because he was just a royal handler in this situation who cared for the girls after their parents, but didn't seem fit for the story until they actually had this idea to make him a villain type character after Elsa was being more sympathetic. A byproduct of simply making character more complex than their initial evil ways that so many people can connect with, which to its credit, worked in its own way. Where I just simply wanted more from the Duke in his character and what was shown and we never actually got that, but also never really needed that in the end to what we got. Frozen is fine on its own in some ways and I'm grateful for what the story is because I love to hate such aspects of the film. I loved this franchise as a kid, I still love it to some extent now, and like Disney itself, will always love to criticize it and love to love it as well. Or the only thing we can do right now is just move on and promise for something new and better for villains in the future. I'm all done, so goodbye.